first of all, thank you all for coming this early morning. I'm Elijah Nelson. I'm the CEO of Jock Lab. And at Jock Lab, we're a sports science company. And our main goal is to maximize potential. And at Jock Lab, we enhance sports equipment and training with the aid of purpose-driven robots. So in other words, we build robotic sports equipment to help maximize potential. And our, right now, basketball equipment is outdated and um, stationary objects used in today's training do not simulate game-like training. And so that's the first problem that Jock Lab um, is set out to address. Here we go. And so at Jock Lab, we wanna take a more intuitive approach. And so our first device, D-Up, is a basketball training device that simulates a game of one versus one basketball by playing defense. And so here's a video of our robot in action. Um, we reached out to a local athlete and um, they worked out with the robot and we got some good feedback on the robot, you know, how we can improve it, you know, what drills and what um, things they like about the robot and what things that we can, you know, they don't like and that we can improve. And so that was very fun, you know, getting the athlete in front of the robot and, you know, he had fun with it and we enjoyed it. And so, um, yeah, that's the robot. It works by playing defense against the user, you know, allowing them to train without the need of an extra player or a coach. And um, here's a quick view of the one year evolution of DUP. I myself, um, being in robotics since middle school, um, have a huge passion for robotics. And I built the first three prototypes in my dorm room, actually. And um, that's um, the first two that you see, uh, actually the first three. And then the fourth prototype, we partnered with Minnesota State University in Mankato. And we worked with a team of senior engineers to help you know, improve those first three prototypes into a much bigger, faster, stronger, you know, sound, ro more robust robot. And um, so pretty much um, how we, this idea of a basketball defense mannequin comes from um, some previous products. And what we want to do is we incorporated all three of the first three um, products that you can see into, um, I guess, one complete product that allows, you know, an athlete to, it's not stationary, you know, it's a robot. You just turn it on and it follows you wherever you want to go. And so that was our goal to just incorporate, you know, these first three models into one complete um, solution. And uh, just a rundown of our attraction, you know, our history. Um, again, built the first two prototypes, um, entered the, the Gustavus Entrepreneurship Cup, known as the Gusty Cup. Uh, won first place there, uh, went through with the um, MN Cup semifinalist. Um, that was a good experience. Continued building, found patents, trademark, and all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, then we partnered with Minnesota State University and Mankato. And, you know, just continued on to grow the business and um, continue to do business competitions and uh, testing with local athletes and trainers. And um, previously, uh, winners of the Beta and Men's Summer um, Showcase this July 2020. And so our next steps, uh, more testing and feedback now that we have our MVP. Uh, we've been reaching out to local athletes, trainers, and coaches, getting their advice, um, setting up training sessions, figuring out how can we you know, improve the robot and meet the needs of the, um, the customers. Um, research and development, um, we are heading to build our design for manufacturing product with the University of St. Thomas. Again, we'll be working with their um, engineering seniors to take this MVP to the next level and um, get it ready for manufacturing um, by 2021. And so, yeah, we plan to have beta products by November, get those out, continue testing, building, learning more about what the customer needs and how we can always you know, improve. And um, we do plan to launch a crowdfunding campaign around the end of this year, uh, 2020. So that's exciting. And uh, here's a quick view of our support system. Gustavus Adolphus College, you know, I'm an alumni of Gustavus, graduated 2019. You know, it's been fun there. <laughs> uh, Minnesota State University in Mankato. Um, we've, we're glad to um, get them on board and help us, you know, take this uh, device to the next level, taking that to St. Thomas. And um, also we have uh, been working with Proto Labs to um, kind of get an idea of how manufacturing looks like. And then Arrow and Indiegogo, that's uh, where we plan to launch our crowdfunding campaign uh, at the end of this year. And so, yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the breakdown of Jock Lab. Uh, again, I want to thank you, One Million Cups community, for being out here. Um, so please, you know, follow our journey on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. 
can also connect with me personally, Elijah Nelson on LinkedIn. You know, at Doc Lab, we're always willing to learn. We're always willing to, you know, be connected with our community, you know, with thinkers and makers, and, you know, just figuring out how, how can we improve, you know, as, you know, a company and, you know, staying in tune with our community. And yeah, so that's, that's all I have um, right now. That's the breakdown of Jock Lab. And um, I guess I'm open for questions now. Great. Thanks so much, Elijah. Thank you. I was there at the Gusty Cup <laughs> when you won. Uh, and the prototype didn't look like that. It wasn't that fancy. <laughs> You've really evolved. This early, like very, very cool. So uh, you can click on uh, raise hand uh, if you'd like to ask a question or uh, you can put your question in chat if you'd like. Uh, so everybody who has questions, you can go ahead and uh, speak out. I, I have one I can get you started with. You talked about a partnership with MSU. How did that uh, partnership come about and how did that evolve? Oh yeah, <laughs> so we reached out to MNSU. We, we told them that we're a young company and we want to you know, take our, we wanted to work with um, MNSU. And so the engineering professor reached back out and he was like, okay, you know, let's have a meeting. We got to meet with the, the professor. He gave us a chance to actually pitch our idea in front of a, a group of engineering seniors. And um, they had a choice to choose between nine senior projects. And we got a group of five students that was really interested in helping us um, improve our dev device. And from there, it's been, you know, it's been a good relationship. Very cool. Did any of them come on board with your company? Um, <laughs> we have one engineer that's been helping us um, a lot and um, we plan to, you know, when Jock Lab is finally gets to, you know, where Jock Lab is going, uh, we plan to reach out to, you know, that person. But um, so far, um, they've all graduated and um, start working with jobs. So I'm a big basketball fan. I'll ask another question. What kinds of uh, maneuvers can the robot defend against? Um, so the robot can track the player wherever they go. So if you go left, it'll go left. If you approach it, it'll move back. You know, if you go right, it'll go right. So if you run real hard at it and come around the side, it's, yes. it, it still can keep up with you? Yes, it'll track you. And it's also programmed to, you know, prevent, you know, running into any device, rather than as a person or, you know, anything around it. Wow. Cool. So uh, other questions from the group? Go ahead, Brian. Um, I was just curious on uh, both what the testing and user feedback has been and, and sort of what you've done to gain testing and user feedback and then, you know, what they've said about how natural it feels to play with the robot and, you know, even anything on how that's changed as you've done testing. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. So one of the um, feedbacks that we have gotten is that um, a trainer actually, a coach here in Minneapolis, wanted the arms on the robot to be movable so that they can move to the side or straight up, but they just wanted that to be movable to simulate more of a, you know, game-like training. You know, since it's already moving, you know, um, they figure why not make the arms move as well. So that was good feedback. And uh, with the um, athletes, um, once we throw it right in front of the, um, the basketball players, you know, we've seen that it was very user-friendly. Like, you know, as soon as we turned it on, they just got right into it and, you know, had fun with it. Bobby has a question. Go ahead, Bobby. I'll have to unmute you here. <laughs> there you go. There you are. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Marvelous piece of engineering. Uh, I'm very curious to wonder, if it, does it have interactive capability like uh, to the head coach? Uh, if the head coach is like in Seattle, can it uh, communicate with the head coach if it's coming out of uh, Detroit? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Can you reframe, reframe that question? Okay, if the if your equipment is uh, in a in a session, uh, like in Minneapolis at a high school, and there's a training session going on or there's a rehearsal going on, can it uh, interact or do you have a communication thing going on to where it can communicate with a head coach like in uh, uh, around the world? Does it have interna international communication or 
they doesn't have communication. Yeah, so um, right now, the, um, with the product that we're trying to get on the market, it's just one simple function, and its main function is to just attract, you know, the player wherever they go. So right now, it does have it doesn't have any form of communication beyond, you know, um, no international or nothing, nothing of that sort. Right. Well, it's a marvelous piece. I've been uh, attracting my grandson uh, for uh, the last four or five years in the basketball world, and also I I tracked a a St. John's uh, uh, graduate who got a full scholarship because of his high school abilities with St. John's in basketball. So uh, you guys are sitting in the right place. Nice, thank you very much. Awesome, Sarah has a question. Go ahead, Sarah. Yeah, so I was just wondering what your target market was. Are you targeting more of like the consumer individually so they can practice on their own or more of like the organization, like a school or team um, so they can bring them to practice and let the players practice with that? Yes, um, both of those. Um, our initial target market is, you know, colleges and universities as well as, you know, the kid and, you know, at home by itself in the driveway that doesn't have, you know, anyone to play with. Awesome. Thank you. So as you're thinking about that marketing, what sorts of, um, you know, things are you thinking about in terms of getting the word out about this and, and how you're going to, um, you know, do that initial marketing? Yeah, so one thing at um, Jock Lab that we are getting into is we're trying to be more visible. We're trying to be more, you know, engaged with social media, in tune with the community. You know, that's why we like to do these things, One Million Cups, um, you know, just being more visible and communicating what we're doing. Um, as effectively as we can. Mike Hahn has a question. Go ahead, Mike. Sure. Uh, just wondering, um, have you or do you plan to seek any angel or venture capital? Um, and have you started that process yet? And I'm also kind of uh, interested to see if uh, the pandemic has changed your business model at all. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as far as raising capital, um, we are in raising capital now. And um, our uh, the state alumni, we're, we're talking with them. So um, as far as angel investment, we're, um, we're, we're um, talking with our alumni um, with that. And as far as the pandemic, actually, um, since the pandemic, we've actually been able to work more with Jock Lab. And that has changed um, our, we think the pandemic has given us an edge, you know, that kind of we have a device that trainers can use. It's, it's safe. Um, they don't have to have any contact. So we've been kind of trying to reframe around that a little bit and try to take advantage of this pandemic and not let it, you know, be a downturn. So we're still thinking of more about that, but um, we do think it gives us an edge. There's an investors network uh, in the Twin Cities that twice a year has uh, gatherings. I'll send you some information. I don't know if they're gonna be doing a gathering or if they're gonna do something virtual, but I'll send you information for the contact person who pulls those investors together. Right. Um, it seems like the kind of thing that they would really get into. Really neat. Uh, uh, Bardia has a question. Go ahead, Bardia. Well, Elijah, awesome job. This is really, really cool. Uh, and as a basketball fan, I was really enthusiastic about this. Um, I was wondering how much contact the robot could take and how, how uh, I mean, how much that has been taken into consideration. I mean, uh, is, it, mm -hmm. is it part of the idea that it's supposed to uh, handle rough tackles or is it more of a, a you know dribble pass circumvent type of type of deal that you see with this yeah so right now it's more of a non-contact robot you know it's programmed to avoid anything any touch um as possible but um speaking to athletes you know contact is something that they they do practice so you know that's something that we're, we're thinking about as, as well thank you Who's, who is on your team in terms of, you know, kind of rounding out your, um, you got you need obviously marketing, finance, production, that sort of thing. How, how many people are on your team to bring this forward? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so uh, my co-founder, Andrew Roby, um, he's more in the business side of things, the marketing, you know, uh, raising capital. Myself, I do the, more of the engineering side, you know, reaching out to athletes and figuring out how we can develop this thing. And we also have uh, two more um, people on our team that we went to school with. You know, we all met in college. 
actually uh, we met by playing basketball in college. We both played on the same intramural team. You know, three years later after graduating at Davis, we decided to you know form Jock Lab, and since then it's been it's been a fun journey so far. <laughs> Did it come out of your own uh, experience of not having someone to play with, <laughs> practice with? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, I thought that was when you were talking about that in uh, the Gusty Cup. I was like, well, I suppose there would be times when you'd want to get out and just practice, and there's anybody around to do that. Um, Sarah has got a question for you. Go ahead, Sarah. Sorry, she just typed another one. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, kind of like how Bobby said, um, have you thought about any future products, like something that the coaches might be able to program and run drills with? So they could program the drills in the actual robot or even future products for like other sports that people could use? Cause I love the idea. Yes, yes. We have gotten a lot of feedback. Some people even want legs on a robot. <laughs> and um, we have ideas for, you know, even boxing and other um, sports. But um, our main focus right now is just to get, uh, um, you know, this one function, just, just to get into the market with this robot. And from there, you know, we'll, we definitely take you know everything into consideration, but we have gotten a lot of feedback on ways we can improve the robot. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it's a really, really great idea. Thank you. Tyler, go ahead, Tyler. Uh, how adaptive is it to, um, in term, I'm, I'm guessing you have to use some sort of lightweight processing power, like a like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or something to that equivalent, but how adaptive is it to um, skill level? So like, I am not going to be able to play against it because I play like an old school big because I'm not fast. I'm not quick. So I, my, my, my game is back them down and get them close to the hoop. So I, I'm guessing it's a training. It would be great for a training device, but could like a five-year-old play against it versus a, uh, you know, a college player. Like, is there a, uh, a setting to allow for different ability levels. Yes, yes, glad you asked. So um, the height can be adjusted between, you know, five to seven foot. The speed can be adjusted between seven miles per hour to, you know, up to 20 miles per hour, but no one trains that fast. So, um, you know, it could be adjusted to um, different skills level for sure. But um, if a five-year-old can play with it, um, we're, we're not sure, we're not sure, but that would, that would be nice though if we can, you know, get it down that far. Let's see, Ryan like had a had a follow up question related to manufacturing. Go ahead, Ryan. Yep. Uh, so I know you said you're looking at getting it, um, you know, on the market. I think you said in November. Uh, are you planning on manufacturing this yourself as you're getting it onto the market, or are you looking for a contract manufacturer, or what is your plan for that? Yeah. So that's still up in the air, but um. I would say that at Jock Lab, we want to see it go through. We don't, we, we don't plan on, you know, licensing or dis distributing, you know, our product. We want to see it go all the way through, whether that's contract manufacturing or manufacturing ourselves. Um, we're still figuring that one out, but, um, you know, we're still learning about it. And that's something, you know, we want to learn more about, you know, connect with you manufacturers and learn how, more about how that process works. So that's something, you know, we're still figuring it out. Uh, do you have any uh, YouTube uh, videos available or is there any media available that's accessible right now? Yes. So Twitter is our most active um, social media platform, you know, from even the first few prototypes to now we have that journey of um, us building and, and, you know, so there's a lot of content there and on YouTube, we do have content as well that you can find, you know, at Jock Lab. Uh, it's just that is that's all I do is uh, get on that on the lab part and I can get the video. Yes, yeah. So if you just search okay. Jock Lab on, even if you search Jock Lab on Google, you can find it. We have a website and we have a lot of content up around social media. Oh, good, good. Thank you. You said you're looking for connections in manufacturing. Could you give us a little bit of a breakdown of what the materials are, what type of manufacturing you're looking for, so we could possibly help you out? <laughs> yeah, so um, that one, <laughs> um, we're still, it's, it's, it's very early in manufacturing stages. Yeah. Um, we're going to be working with St. Thomas and they're going to be designing the robot that's going to go into manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's still very early. We, I, we still don't know, you know, what goes into the manufacturing process. It's something that we're still learning. 
So I can't really say what type of manufacturing, it's just more robotics, if anything. Um, you know, it's something we're still figuring out. Have you, have you identified any manufacturers that you believe would be capable of producing such a product? That's, I guess that's where I would, from, from our side, you know, Barty and I having done some manufacturing, not this technology side, but um, first what we did is we just identified who's capable of producing what we're trying to produce. And then after that, um, you know, even looking at Indiegogo or other Kickstarter platforms of people who are in your shoes producing similar products um, and trying to track down their story a lot of these small companies like us, you can pretty much figure out what we're doing. Um, going back through their Twitter, going back through their Instagram, you can kind of figure out, they share that story of how they found the manufacturer. They share pictures of the manufacturers. So you can, if you do some hunting, there's often a chance that uh, you can figure out where they're doing the manufacturing for similar type products. Um, something to, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, one thing that we did was, to, you know, to price our robot, we um, got our, request for manufacturing folks. So we did reach out to a few manufacturers to see how much it'll cost to build the robot. But as far as sourcing the right manufacturer to build the right product for us, that's something that we're still looking into. So I would take that advice and, you know, look into companies similar to ours and figure out, you know, how they went through manufacturing. So thank you for that advice. Uh, John Considine, go ahead. I was wondering if you, uh, there was a question earlier about, you know, age group for uh, utilizing the robot. Have you run demos with like youth basketball associations or is that anything you're interested in? Yes, that's something that we're interested in. We haven't been able to get into contact with too many players due to the whole COVID situation. So it's just been, you know, kind of up in the air, you know, it's not been a matter of who's willing to, you know, step outside of their homes and, you know, uh, work with us. But um, that's, that's something that we, um, that we would like to get into for sure. I'd be happy to connect you with the Mankato Area Basketball Association uh, when you're interested in doing something like that. For sure, for sure. I, I like that. I like that. This is a this is an awesome product for doing um, business plan competitions, and you've done some. You did Minnesota Cup and a few others. Um, I can send you a list of uh, business plan competitions across the country that you can you could look into. Some are for grad students only, some are for, you know, just anybody in the community who has an idea. Some are very particular to, you know, kinds of technology. Um, but I've got a list of something like 30 or 40 different competitions. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it's, it's basically, it's free money, you know, when you've already got your presentation ready to go. <laughs> just go out and uh, you just gotta sell it, right? This is, yeah, this is very cool. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, I'll call on one of our organizers. Uh, Bobby, would you ask our famous One Million Cups finish question? Yes. Uh, as a group here, what can we do for you most importantly? Well, a good question. Um, just, I, I like to connect, you know, with, um, just connecting with the Jock Lab team, um, you know, the, 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 the advice that um, I've been given so far through this conversation has been helpful. So we can connect outside of this platform even, you know, on LinkedIn or whatever, you know, that'd be great just to follow up. Awesome. Thanks so much for a great presentation. What a, what a fascinating product. Uh, Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you an email with some follow up uh, information that I think might be helpful. and. Um, you should also be in touch with Launch Minnesota if you if you haven't been yet. They're looking to find and uh, encourage technology companies in the state, so it'd be a good resource for you too. I'll send you some uh, some links. So thanks everybody for all your great questions. I'm gonna take the screen back. That's okay. All right, thank you.